Welcome back to Fixing Furniture. This is the front porch of my home, and this is a project I'm working on for my own furniture. It's rare that I do that, but I've got some outdoor chairs here that I thought would be a great project to show you. These chairs have a squeak to them, and they're starting to come apart, and it's the perfect time to fix them. If I wait much longer, they might break. This is a spot that Lori and I like to sit and have a coffee or a glass of wine. So I'll take these in the workshop and we'll start fixing furniture. My workshop's a little full right now. I'm working on this roll top desk project and the finish needs to cure for a couple of days before I can finish it off. You'll see this video before this one comes out. Exterior furniture takes different punishment than interior. And this repair will show you how to put it together the right way and the right adhesives to use. Stick with me, I'll show you how it's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. The front rail here, you can see this has been broken off. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. The furniture you see in my videos are from customers bringing them into our workshop. This one being my own, I know the history behind it so I can tell what's gone on with it. This was purchased about 20 years ago at Walmart. It was a green, hunter green chair and painted it white. It came in several pieces and I had to assemble it. It's now worn. It's actually worn more than it should. You know how the saying goes, the mechanic's car is the worst? Well, this is a prime case. There are two warning signs before a chair will actually break. The first one is sound. And if I move this, you hear that creaking? That's wood rubbing together. So there's something loose. The second sign is something becomes loose and this arm is loose. So I've really left this right before it's ready to break. If I don't fix it now, it could become broken next season. So it's getting into fall. It's a great time to take it apart and get it ready to store it over the winter. This chair was assembled with uh, screws through these screw caps here and here. And there's another one here, here and one up at the top. So this was all manufactured as one side, the other side was there, and then I assembled it together. The problem with the joinery is in the factory made joints. Here this is coming loose, it's coming loose down here, and both of these joints are loose. The thing that concerns me is this part that's loose. If we go to the other side, I'll show you why. So this piece has a tenon that goes in here, and if you look close, there's a pin. So that pin goes through and holds that tenon in place. This is a great way to build outdoor furniture because there's so much wood movement. Here, because of this movement, I think I've got a broken pin. I'm gonna take the sides off of everything so I need to pop out these caps. The easiest way to do that is with a drill and a screw. Well, that was a nice surprise, it just popped out. On the inside of the plug, you can see the original green color of the chair. Let's see if the rest of these are that easy. Nope, not that one. How about this one? Nope. I'll take the screw and we'll try the normal tactic I use. What I do is I put a screw in here and slowly drive it forward. And when it hits that nail head on the inside, or the screw head on the inside, it should push the cap out, just like that. And that split the cap, so I can either repair that or I can get new caps for it. Now I can take out the screws. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like 20 years ago, I put so much glue in these, I actually covered the screw head. This is gonna take a while to get out. I wish I knew then what I know now. You ever have one of those moments? Tell me about it in the comments. In the meantime, I'm gonna dig this out. It's pretty tough to navigate this hole and not damage the sides here with this knife. So I'm going to try a half inch drill bit and just gently move it into that head. I don't want to damage the head of the screw, but I need to get that glue out. Oh, that looks like it might be working. Let's give it a try. Ah, yes. 
Success. Okay, four more to go. Wow, look how clogged this one is. See the glue down there? There's a lot to come out. The head of the screws seem to be stuck inside here, but I seem to be able to undo them and the parts are coming apart, so I'll take that as a win. So this whole side's now loose, which is good. Turn this on this side and go through the same process here. So there's one piece. Take out the rest of these screws here. See if the seat will come off. There. I think that's it. Yep. Okay, and now for the back. It's funny how this is just lifting off because the screw head has nowhere to go because of that lip of glue that I've got in there. Okay, I think that should do it. Yep. Okay, so now I've got, oh, I can see why there's a problem here. This whole assembly here is just rocking back and forth. If I set this down on the bench and just push it this way, you can see how much plays there. Let's try this other piece here and we'll see how much is here. Oh wow, that's much worse. Now this is the left side of the chair and sitting on the porch, this is the western exposure. So when there's a driving rain that comes in, this side of the chair is getting more wet than the other side. Also, when the sun is setting, the sun is beating on this side of the chair versus the other side. So there's a lot of moisture changes here going on when this is sitting outside. And that's why exterior furniture is very different than interior furniture. I've got this block of wood that's in my tool cabinet. And this is a piece that I cut. I put a little tiny saw cut right through here, a very fine one. And you can see how much it's opened up as it's dried. This is a good demonstration of how much wood actually shrinks when it dries. It's really important to understand that wood does shrink and it expands, and that's why outdoor furniture goes through so much more punishment than indoor furniture. If you think about summertime, we might have some humid days. When it's humid out, this is like a sponge. Wood expands when it gets humid. And then when it gets drier out, it contracts. So if you're in a home that has air conditioning during the summer, the humidity is constant, so the furniture indoors isn't exposed to that. But the furniture on your front porch, like mine, it's expanding and contracting continually. And most glues can't keep up with that. So you need special adhesives to be able to deal with that. I've got some more work to do to take this apart. Let's see if I can get it down to the individual pieces. I'll just show you again the movement in this chair. Now that it's on the bench here, it's a little easier to see. So what I need to do is take apart each of these joints to re-glue them to get them solid again. And each of them are pinned. So what I need to do is drill a hole through this pin and release that joint. Now to do that, I need to use a brad point bit. The purpose of a brad point bit is to make sure that the drill bit stays going the same direction. When you're drilling cross grain, it's not really an issue. But when you're drilling into end grain, like this big piece of dowel I've got here, the grain can actually shift the way that a drill bit wants to move. But with a brad point, it keeps it centered. And that way I'm going to be able to drill out the full dowel and keep it centered so I can release that joint. I've added a tape flag here and this just gets the depth right so that I'm not going to be drilling all the way through the piece. So I'll just get that brad point centered in the dowel. And then I can drill that whole dowel out.
Now I want to gently ease this apart. I can't take it apart this way. I have to take these parts off this way. So I'm going to use a spreader clamp and this allows me to gently see how the pieces are coming apart. If you use a mallet in a situation like this, you can very easily break pieces. So this part here, the armrest has to come up this way and that comes out this way. So this is where I'm going to start. So gently put pressure on this and see how it opens up. So it's starting to move here. It's starting to move a bit more. Let me just check, make sure all of that dowel is cleared out. No, I've got a little bit of a splinter, so I'll ease that off, drill it out just a little bit more, and then make sure I can pull that out. And there we go. The tenon's intact. We've got a nice hole here. So that's what we want to see. Now we'll see if this joint wants to come apart here. You can see there are a few bits of the dowel pin still left there. So I'll just clear that out with the drill. I don't want to drill through the tenon here. And there we go, a good release. I'll keep working these joints apart the same way. So the next are these two ends. This has to come off here, and then these can spread apart. You can see the one on the left here has blown out of the back, but when the pin was put in, it was pretty much on the edge of the tenon. We look at the other one. That's the way it should look. So that's in good shape. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips, and more. Now back to fixing furniture. Before I get too carried away, I just want to label a few of the parts here. Make sure they go back together the same way they did before. When I've got the glue on, I want to be able to move pretty quickly once I've got the adhesive applied to these pieces. The tenons on either side here are looking good, and this section here, uh, there are no pins in them, so that'll go back together easily. So it's just this one corner here where I've got an issue with the pin, the way it was drilled originally. I can't really do anything about that, so I'm going to have to glue that back together. I'm going to set this aside, bring in the next one, work on it, and we'll take a look at what those joints look like. These joints aren't quite looking as good. On here, you'll notice that there's some light colored wood, and over here, it's really weathered. So what's happening is this part of the chair is getting more water in it. The same thing is happening down here. The wood is darker, and these pieces are splintering out. So on both of the bottoms here, there's a bit of repair work and where the arm was broken and loose here, I can see now that there's a broken tenon, so I have to deal with that. The first thing I need to do is clear out the broken parts in the mortise. The last bits of the tenon are in there as well as the pin, so I'll drill that out with a forstner bit that drills a flat hole. With this tenon broken off here, it's just way too loose to hold that together. So what I need to do is get a piece of dowel. I'll get out some 5 8 dowel. And I'll cut off a small section to work with. The dowel now fits in here, and what I need to do is drill it into here so I can have a tenon that goes through this part and this part as well. I'll move this out of the way, put this in the vise, and now use a flush cutting saw to cut this off. So 
So I've got a nice smooth surface to start with. I use my awl to locate the center, and I just do this by eye, but if you're not sure about doing this, just make sure that you're measuring from both sides so that you can get the center of here and the center of here. The Forstner bit has a sharp tip on it, so I'll line that up in the center hole. So test fit the dowel. Yeah, that's going to work out well. Now, here's an important mistake I want you to avoid when you're doing this. This is a piece of furniture that someone had drilled a dowel into, and the dowel didn't actually get to the bottom of the hole, so they ended up taking out strength in this piece, and it ended up breaking. So to avoid that, what you want to do is allow the air and the glue at the bottom of the hole to escape. So if I just put this in here like this, it's acting like a compression. But if I put a small groove up here and across here, what that does is gives the air and the glue a channel to push up. So this will get fully seated right to the bottom of the hole, and I won't have any gaps there that will cause weakness. The last thing to do here is just to bevel that edge, and what that does is it helps the glue get around this dowel and up the sides. So if I don't do this, I might push most of the glue away. So it's a good technique to make sure you've got good adhesion. Now I've got a skill testing question for you. What type of glue would you use on this? I'll let you think about that. I've got two more pieces here that need some patching. I'll get those ready and then get out the glue. Down at the rocker here, both of these tenons have breaks in them. This one and this one here. So I need to patch these in so that when I put the pins back in, they're going to hold. You can see where the dowel pin goes and the wood that's missing. So what I need to do is make a couple of cuts so I can glue in this new piece of wood to restore the tenon. I'm all ready for the glue up. Have you guessed what type of glue I'm going to use? Well, you can't use PVA or high glue because they're water-based, so they don't work well in outdoor situations. You can use either polyurethane or epoxy. In these places, I've got some voids, so I'm going to use epoxy. I'm using uh, a kind here that is very hard, and I've got a kind that's softer. I'm going to use both on this project, and I'll show you a little bit more why. But these ones, I want these joints to be rock solid, these connections not to be moving at all. So I'm going to mix this up, apply the glue, and let it dry.
This epoxy is dried overnight so I can now work on the joinery. Part of preserving these chairs and making sure they're going to last as long as possible is also protecting the wood. You can see here the finish is starting to fail in a couple spots. It's just on the verge of failing. So I'm going to be sanding these down and putting a new coat of paint on these to help protect them and make them last as long as possible. Now epoxy comes in a couple of different types. This epoxy that I'm using here ends up drying rock hard. And I've got a leftover piece here from a previous project. Just listen to this. So it's very, very firm. Now, when you're working on joinery for outdoor furniture, because there is that wood movement, I recommend using a more flexible epoxy, something that's got a bit of elasticity to it. So I'll be using that on one chair, and on the other chair, I'm going to be using polyurethane. I don't know which of these two glues will outperform the other. So what I'm going to do is on this chair, glue it together with polyurethane and show you how that's done. And with the other chair I need to disassemble still, I'm gonna put that back together with this epoxy. And that test will probably take years for me to figure out the result, but it's something I'm really curious about. So I hope I'll get an answer. Now that I've test fit all the pieces and I know they go together well, I'm ready for the glue up. So I'm using polyurethane glue and with that I need to use moisture. I'm going to put the polyurethane in the mortise and the moisture on the tenon that goes into the mortise and that way the two ingredients come together and that will activate the glue. Now there is one section on the other side of this chair where I've got a tenon that's got a void in it I couldn't repair and for that I'm going to be using epoxy and I created this puddle in my last batch just to show you epoxy is the only type of glue that can hold when there's a void. So in that particular case it's the right glue for the job. Polyurethane glue foams up when it cures, and that creates a common misconception. I'll talk about that a little bit later. I've glued up both sides of the rocking chair with polyurethane glue, and they're clamped up right now. This is the next chair I've taken apart, and it's ready to be glued up. So I'm going to be using 5-minute epoxy on this one, and this is a more flexible epoxy. What I'll do is put a little puddle on this plastic sheet, and we'll take a closer look at the three glues once they're all dried. Now I'm running short on clamps so I've broken into some of the boxes I have here ready for an upcoming project. This is a clamp by Jorgensen so what I'm doing is comparing a bunch of different clamps to see what additional clamps I want to purchase for my workshop. I've got the biggest brand names in the clamping industry as well as some of the least expensive ones I could buy on Amazon. I'm really curious to see how they perform so you'll see that on a video coming up. I've got a respirator I need to put on because I'm working with epoxy. I'll get that on and start gluing this up.
We've just reached 60,000 subscribers. We're on our way to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. If you can help us out get to that goal, I'm going to do a full workshop tour of my workshop so you can see all the nooks and crannies. I'm going to update this chart. If you can give us a thumbs up and share this with others, that would really help us out. Thank you. Okay, so everything is dried here overnight. The epoxy that I was using has a real strong smell to it. It's not very pleasant. So it's not something you want to be in the workshop for. And again, you have to wear a respirator when you're working with epoxy. So you need to work in a well-ventilated area. I can now take the clamps off this and assemble the chairs and we can get this prepped and ready for paint. The first thing I need to do here is reinstall these pins. So I've got a drill bit here that's just one size larger than what I was using. And now what I could do is insert the dowel pin. Now, if you just put it in like this with a square edge, it can be a little bit difficult, but I'll show you a trick of the pencil sharpener. So all I do is I put this in the pencil sharpener, I turn it about a quarter round, and that gives me a beveled edge that makes it easier to insert the dowel. I'll just put a supporting block under here, insert the dowel, and I can drive it home. Now I can cut this off with a flush cut saw. And we're good to go. Now to make the process more efficient, I've sharpened both ends of these dowels. So what I can do is put a couple in Cut them off. And then I can quickly move on to the next ones by just flipping it over. It's easier to stack furniture than it is to try and hold pieces in place and bolt them in. So I'm just really resting those on the bolted joints first. Let's see, this goes here. And then what I'll do is stack this on top and then I can bolt it together. A little too close to the tool cabinet. We'll start that one there and then get this one started. And these are nice strong fasteners. There's metal nuts inside there. So these will work out well. I'll just tighten them progressively. Take all of them tightened at the same time and we'll be good to go. So the last step in assembly is just putting a little dab of glue on these caps, not a whole bunch. Just put a little bit of hide glue on either side here and then put it in. Now you can see I still have the screw hole here, so I just need to fill that in and a little bit of a void around this particular hole and we'll be ready for the paint.
I'm almost ready for paint. I'm using a Benjamin Moore Aura exterior paint. This is a new product. I've never used this before, so I'm interested to try it out. And before I do that, I need to plug the holes in these caps. I'm using an exterior wood filler. You need to make sure you're not using an interior wood filler for something like this. So I'll sand these down, prep them, and then today's a beautiful day. I'll take these outside and Lori and I are going to have some fun painting these chairs. As I was cleaning off the back of the chair here, you can see one of the slats here is delaminated. It looks like it's plywood, so I'm going to have to take that off and glue it together with epoxy. Okay, so I'll take this piece off, I'll put it in the vise, and you can see here how much has come apart from the lamination. I've got to get glue all the way in there. So I'll get out the epoxy, mix up another batch, and I'm going to put a little bit more hardener in here than normal. That'll just make it set up faster. And then I'll pump with the resin and then mix this up. When you're mixing up epoxy, you need to make sure that you've got all the hardener mixed with the resin. So I generally mix this for about two minutes and then I'll move on to putting this into a syringe. So I should be wearing a respirator right now, but I've got the door open, so I'll work quickly with this and then set this aside so we can cure outside the workshop. Now, what I'm going to do is put it into a syringe and there are different sizes of syringes. If you put epoxy in a thick syringe, it's going to heat up very fast. So you don't want that. I'm going to use this mid-sized syringe. And then there are different size tips you can buy as well. I'm going to use the green tip. And that will allow me to get it in those tight spots. So what I'm going to do is use a screwdriver just to open up the opening here, put the syringe in, and then what I want to do is get that epoxy deep into the pocket. And I want to get enough in there that it will squeeze out to the edge. So just give that a test. Yeah, you see it squeezing out here? So that's what I'm looking for. Just need a little bit more right in there. So we'll now do that between each of these layers. And when this hardens, it'll be good as new. I've wiped off all the excess glue and I'm going to give the clamp one more squeeze which will probably squeeze out a little bit more glue. Let's take a look.
The second coat of paint's done here, so we'll go back into the workshop and I'll show you the glue samples that I've made up. These are the three glue samples, the two epoxies and the polyurethane, so we can take a closer look at them. But before we do, I want to let you know there's a magazine that just came out. Canadian Woodworking and Home Improvement Magazine has an article that I've written about repairing chairs. So this is the October-November 2022 issue, if you're interested in picking that up. Let's take a close look at the polyurethane. So the polyurethane foams up when it cures. And if I pull this off, you can see here that it expands with the foam but that foam has no strength to it. So some people confuse this with glue that can fill voids, but it can't. So that's polyurethane. This is the epoxy that I use. This is the hard epoxy. And if I break this off, I actually can't. Let me see. You hear how hard that is? There we go. That's how hard this dries. And then the five minute epoxy, this is a sample here. You can see I can bend this. It's flexible. And that's why I wanted to use this on the joints of that furniture because it will move slightly with the seasonal wood movement and hold that chair together. I hope you find this helpful for the adhesives you should be using on outdoor furniture. You might find a PVA glue that says it's weather resistant, but in my experience using a few of them, they just don't hold up outdoors. So you want to use epoxy or polyurethane. Now the paint needs to cure on the chairs for a few days, but Lori and I will set them up on the porch and you can take a look at the final product. The chairs are now protected for years to come. We'll see what happens with the epoxy versus the polyurethane. We keep our chairs out here until Halloween. We can enjoy giving the treats out to the trick-or-treaters. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. Great job, hon.